Through Obama's 2009 inaugural address, what messages are communicated to the people of America? I was asking the students to analyze the cumulative effect of uh, President Obama's 2009 inaugural address and analyze the form and the content. By form, I mean the literary and rhetorical devices that were used. Not only did he want to address what he wanted to fix, he also showed in lines 52 and 57, well, through 52 and 57, all of the goals that he wanted to complete during his term. And then like on words that he uses a lot of, he used the word we a lot, speaking as if we were all together and gonna work together to help it. Like in all lines, like even in line 28, he says we, 59. I'm just pointing out random ones, but it's effective. I engage the students in a lot of public speaking activities that prepare them to be comfortable. Um, on this day is repeated both times. Which is like, which is an example of anaphora, because um, it really like it emphasizes what he's trying to, the point he's trying to get across. I introduce to them a, how do you engage in a conversation with your peers, not interrupting each other and being respectful of others' opinions, respectfully disagreeing. Obama he alludes to like historical events, like on lines 146 to 149, he's sort of like. Um, emphasizing the hope and strength in times of difficulty. And yeah, he also like references presidents and quotes presidents to make himself appear like more convincing to his listeners. Thematically, the speech fits into a, a general essential question for the year. How does the, the past inform our current decisions and our actions? He alluded to the Battle of Valley Forge during the Revolutionary War. And this was a time of violence and despair. Thousands of people were dying. There was almost no possibility that they were going to succeed in this war. And Washington's words of hope are basically what got them through it. And Obama is saying if they can overcome a struggle like this, we can overcome this economic struggle. So the winter of hardship that he's talking about is symbolizing the economic crisis that they were facing at the time, I think. The way that I have my Socratic seminar structured, they are responsible for analyzing the text and picking out elements and devices, so rhetorical devices and literary elements, and speaking with each other and trying to uncover and discover the purpose of the text that we're discussing, rather than my directly instructing them on what I think the, the meaning of the text is. A major rhetorical device that Obama uh, makes use of is the tricolon. So uh, he does it a number of times, like for example, in line 17, homes have been lost, jobs shed, businesses shuttered. That's a tricolon. I found another example of a tricolon, line 23. He speaks about the challenges that America is facing, saying that they are real, they are serious, and they are many. I incorporated text-based answers. During the discussion, students were referencing particular lines in order to provide answers to their questions or to answer each other's questions. And so you, you saw a, a direct reference to text. When thinking about the preparation for high-performing students, for, for this group of students in particular, I picked a speech that forced them to closely read rhetoric and to, to pick out and pick apart the use of rhetorical devices. And so this really forces them to do some high-level critical thinking on their own without my guidance as their teacher. There are a lot of rhetorical devices and literary devices found in this speech, like an amazing amount. But not only do you see them in this speech, but you could also connect it to Langston Hughes' poem, Let America Be America Again. And I think they contrast greatly, like they're basically opposite people. And ironically, they're both talking about the same people. They're talking about the hardworking people. The difference is Obama shaped his words with optimism while Langston spoke negatively about them. Obama's saying that we need to renew America's dream. So he's saying that we had the dream, but we just need to get it back. And Langston's saying we need to redeem the dream. He thinks that we never had the dream, but we still need to reach it. I agree with Alex partially in that Hughes is negative, but towards the end, he becomes more like Obama, his tone. Like in the beginning, his tone is pessimistic and angry about America. He really didn't like how it didn't fulfill its American dream. But um, in the last stanza, he says, you know, there's enough hope. 
we can have the hope for America to be better again. So are you saying that Obama's trying to rekindle the spirits of American people so we can, ha so we can have another great America? Yes, I think that is what he's saying. He stresses hope a lot in his poem. He's saying, with hope, we can move forward. With hope, you can overcome any struggle that you face. So yes, I think that. How do you think he's trying to say, like, how are, is American people supposed to, like, achieve this dream? Obama, I think he's saying that the Americans need to work in unison. And that's why he uses unifying words like we, our, us. Right, he puts the, himself on their level so they can all work together. Um, Langston Hughes, he also has the same thing. He wants everybody to work together. He says w in line 82, we the people must redeem. The activity that I used today with my students provided me with an opportunity to be reflective about my own teaching. What I observed specifically was the students struggled a little bit with the depth of their analysis. So what I saw was a sharp articulation of what devices were used, but not a parallel being drawn to the purpose. You're doing a great job, you know, picking out the devices that have been used in the speech, but if you could push yourselves to kind of deepen that analysis a little bit and think to yourself, how does this support or push forward his purpose, that would be really helpful because I, I haven't heard a lot of what, why is he giving this speech? What is the main theme, right? Like what, what is his point of view? Agreeing with Karina, um, how everyone's the same but we're, everyone is different but we're all the same. Line 103 and 104 says we are a nation of Christians and Muslims, Jews and Hindus and non-believers. And I think he's working to unify all people, saying that we're shaped by our differences and by languages and cultures, and that we're one and we'll only make America better if we all work together. I really think the president's purpose was definitely trying to convey a sense of unity and definitely saying like we're one nation, we should really band together and so we can really, you know, accomplish anything and face our challenges. Uh, he used tricolon a lot in the, using lots of groups of threes to try to help, you know, really drive the point home, like the saying, we came, we saw, we conquered. It really, like, helps give emphasis to whatever he's saying and what he's trying to convey throughout his speech. So I thought that was a great way to help convince people that he was the right president, he was the right choice, and really instill trust in the American people.